Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Terry Thompson, who is a member of the New York City Board of Education, appointed by Claire Schulman, the Borough President of Queens. And she is a graduate of Queens College, so she certainly uh, is identified with us at the City University. And of course, member of the board is only a part-time job in her uh, full-time uh, career. She is a director, vice president and director of the Civic Affairs uh, Division of the of City Corp Group. Uh, welcome to this program. And uh, you just uh, had a vote on something that I've been working on for a long time, uh, bilingual education. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad to see that for the first time uh, in many, many years there are some changes. Uh, how did the uh, board come about to bring about those changes? Well, actually, the vote is scheduled for tonight, Herman. And I think uh, for, for too long, um, children with English language needs have sort of been the step stepchild children of the system. Um, if you look at every indicator, you know, they have the highest dropout rate, perform very poorly on standardized tests. Uh, the board uh, began to study, took a cohort of students about 10 years ago and followed them um, through the system. And what we discovered um, just several months ago is that 65% of the students um, do exit out of uh, bilingual education or, or ESL um, in three years, but 35% do not. And to that's me, that's a very not a good high number. percentage. So that alone indicates that that we need to improve um, the learning for all of our children, especially for English language. You know, I, I was the uh, in, in Congress in 1974. I was in the Committee on Education and Labor, and I was the chief sponsor of the Bilingual Bicultural Education Act. Ah. Uh, but I never would have been able to get it through Congress uh, unless it was clear that it was bilingual right. to learn English first and also that it was limited in time. If I had said three years, uh, it never would have passed Congress. Yeah. And the problem is that in many areas uh, of the city, it has extended for uh, up to eight years, right. and that we can't do. Right. The, probably the students most impacted negatively are the older students, junior high and high school. Um, you know, we studied a group of ninth graders, um, and only 11 percent exited out after three years. No, there are great challenges. Now, there are some wonderful bilingual programs that truly work. We have wonderful dual language programs that are fabulous. Uh, what the board is voting on tonight is a, a major, major reform. And a good part of it is based on the notion that parents should be able to choose the appropriate program for their children in consultation with the staff. That, that makes a great deal of sense because, after all, parents are the ones who care most for the uh, right. students, uh, aside from the teachers. And, but the good part about it, from my point of view, is that it bypasses a conflict with the Aspira Consent Decree mm -hmm. because there's no judge who can say to parents that they cannot uh, decide what to do for the children. So right. it's a very skillful way of avoiding uh, legal problems because the problem we all have is uh, you at the Board of Education and me at the City University. Every time we do something, there's a lawsuit. Right. So, uh, right. And then we have to wait uh, years and years till the uh, results are achieved. But I think that this decision will certainly go forward. I think we're uh, in the right direction. There are four programs the parents will be able to choose from. Uh, bilingual, ESL, intensive ESL, um, and then dual language programs. And I think the greatest challenge we probably have is um, communicating with parents, mm -hmm. helping them make this um, decision yeah. and consent to the program that their children uh, will be placed in. Um, I looked at some numbers yesterday, and 45% uh, of our children come from homes where English is not the, the language spoken at home. So we have a very great challenge um, in implementing bilingual education, especially in the area of informing parents. I know I've been on Spanish television channels yeah. 41 and 47 yeah. explaining that to parents, but right. we certainly have to keep up the explanations. Yeah. Another thing, a vote that's coming up soon, has to do with the privatization mm -hmm. of five schools which are uh, supposed to be taken over by the Edison Schools, which is a profit-making organization. How do you think that vote's going to come out? Uh, too soon to guess. You know, we haven't actually seen the contract yet, and it's playing out. And certainly, um, there are many people who have um, 
uh, you know, very strong voices on the issue, <clears throat> um, as we've heard in the last few days. There, there is great opposition to it. Uh, for me, I'll look at the contract when it comes and make a decision, but I'm inclined to support the notion of giving these students in these five schools, uh, where the Board of Ed has had a shot at it mm -hmm. for many years, mm -hmm. and the uh, results, uh, the achievement results in those schools are appalling. I think these children deserve another shot. I don't want to get into the ideology of it, but I think, um, you know, how we're structuring this is that these schools would be converted to charter schools. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about parent consent. Fifty percent of the parents would have to approve before this could happen, just as in any other charter school. Um, we, uh, the board would hold the contract with Edison. Um, Edison, you know, would do the conversion to charter school. And in return for some flexibility, um, Edison would be held accountable, something that our, our regular public schools are not held accountable today. Yeah, well, you know, there are many, many, the contract. many, many yeah. schools that fall into that category. So taking only five, mm -hmm. it's really a small okay. sample of uh, the many and schools involved. For me, I think the, the greatest um, accomplishment that we can do is to see what, what they're able to do that we haven't been able to do. How can we learn from that experiment? Um, you know, several years ago, the state legislature passed the legislation allowing for charter schools. And, and for me, the exciting thing was that um, that these schools be used as laboratories uh, and pilots and help us learn. Two of our schools, actually closely associated with City University, Middle College High School and International High School, were converted um, last year to charter schools. And those are two schools actually housed at LaGuardia Community College that have a strong partnership with LaGuardia Community mm -hmm. College. No, I, I, under I, the direction I encourage of the idea of Wonderful. having our colleges uh, get involved with elementary and secondary right. schools so that we can work with the students while they are in school to make sure that uh, when they come to us at the City University that right. they're ready for college work. Right. Actually, the College Now program mm -hmm. yes. um, has been fabulous. Um, you know, great results uh, for our children who attend the College Now program. And thanks to your leadership, uh, the program was expanded to ninth and 10th grade last year. Yeah. Uh, you've been responsible for some important uh, initiatives. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, in Queens and throughout the city, but one of them that uh, I think everyone will find interesting is you're sponsoring a Frank Sinatra High School mm -hmm. for the Arts, which temporarily is going to also be at LaGuardia Community College. Right. Tell us about that. Sure. Actually, through the leadership of Council Speaker Peter Vallone and Tony Bennett, mm -hmm. uh, we will be opening in September uh, Frank Sinatra School for the Performing Arts, and it is very exciting. Um, it will be housed temporarily at LaGuardia Communication, uh, Community College until the uh, permanent building is built in Astoria, uh, near the Astoria Motion Picture Studios. Uh, it will be a performing arts school similar to LaGuardia. Mm -hmm. Queens will have its own. And it actually, uh, Judy Rizzo, uh, Deputy Chancellor, has spoken about the need to have a performing arts school in each of our boroughs. Um, we kicked off um, the announcement of the school a few months back at the Friars Club and many many people involved in the entertainment industry are looking forward to serving as mentors to the children in the school and, and they're and also going to contribute to Absolutely. make contri financial contributions, financial contributions yeah. as well as uh, contributions of time and effort so we're the, excited about that. The thing that I found interesting about that is that the uh, the students will get a chance to perform mm -hmm. by going to the other schools in the, in the borough. So right. Right. The, the and there, it, there's also a very large community service component to the school, so that the students will be performing at nursing homes and um, at civic events uh, throughout the city. So we're very excited about that school, as well as the 10 other high schools that we'll be building in Queens. Um, as you know... Well, let me get to that, yeah. because, because that, is a, uh, that has to do with a problem which I think is much more serious in Queens than in any other borough, and that is the question of overcrowding. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, over the years, the Board of Education has never been able to plan for what we all know is a continuing migration to New York City. I right. mean, uh, any one of us who knows anything about the city uh, could have told the board, and in fact I have over the years, told them that more and more people are coming in from uh, Dominican Republic, from Mexico, from Central America, and from Asia, and from uh, uh, the Caribbean, so that any, seems to me, any kind of city planner would have been able to figure out that a massive rebuilding plan had to take place, but it didn't happen, especially it didn't happen at Queens. 
You're right, Herman. It didn't happen in Queens. And, you know, if you look at Queens County, probably the, the one thing we're most proud of is the ethnic diversity of our borough. Uh, the fact yes. that we believe we're the yes. most ethnically diverse county mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. um, it, we're very proud of it. Um, what we're not proud of is the fact that um, our number one problem in the borough is the overcrowding in our schools. And we began our school year in September short 27,000 seats. Um, uh, uh, 17,000 of those seats were in our high schools alone. Uh, we have students um, in Queens, 10,000 of them, in our high schools who are not taking the full complement of their classes. They're only taking six courses instead of seven each day. Uh, we actually have to receive a waiver from the State Education Department to allow us to gyp these children of one course. And it's not going to get better. No. I saw some projections that indicate that by the year 2003 or 4, it'll be something like 40 42,000 yeah. seats short, uh, and some projections are even higher. Now, you uh, were appointed to a task force, mm -hmm. uh, and you came back with a recommendation right. uh, last year, which some people consider quite dramatic. Tell sure. us about I'll it. I'll tell you about it. Uh, well, basically, uh, you know, there's no doubt that we need more money to build schools. Uh, to relieve the overcrowding, we must build new schools. With the capital plan that the board passed um, less than two years ago, uh, we'll be building, you know, 32,000 seats in Queens Cal County, but <clears throat> at the end of the day, uh, because of the increase in growth in our population, we'll be standing still. We won't have made any progress. We'll still be short 25,000 seats. Um, so we decided to look at other means. What are some of the administrative solutions that we could explore? Um, I put together a task force uh, on year-round education um, and brought together people uh, some of them hit the historic enemies of year-round education. Now, so, what does year-round <coughs> education mean? Year-round education does not mean that you extend the school day or the school year. Children go to school the same number of days that they would in the conventional school year. What it does, it really means year-round facility use. So mm -hmm. instead of using our facilities from September through June, the school is used, the school building itself is used 12 months a year. By utilizing the school building and staggering the schedule of students, you can put more students in, in the building um, in more ideal you know, conditions. Um, so we put together a task force, which included all the parent organizations, the major parent organizations, uh, the UFT, Citizens Budget Commission, the New York City Partnership, um, a wonderful group of people. And, and, and we worked for eight months to look at the possibility of recommending year-round education for our high schools only. Did, they, the, did they approve it? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's, uh, that's very rare so that that group en would uh, enthusiastic. agree on anything to right. say nothing. In fact, about. many said that they couldn't believe that just with the group of people we had put together that we were able to agree. To agree. Okay, we'll talk more about that right after these announcements. Right. Do you think you have the power to change the world? I can change the world one child at a time. I know I can make a difference in those children's lives. I teach. I teach. Yes, they're teachers, but to the kids they reach, they're heroes. I teach. Do you have the power to wake up young minds, to be someone's hero? Teach, to make an impact on our future. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. I joined the Peace Corps because it gave me a, an opportunity to do something worthwhile. We were providing clean water, which to everyone there is health. And we try to do the same thing here by just providing health care. I'd recommend the Peace Corps to anyone that was thinking about any job. It'll help them excel and be better at whatever they do. You learn the value of service. You're going to want to be in the position to give service back. Peace Corps volunteers. Changing the world. Changing America. We're back today with Terry Thompson, who's a member of the New York City Board of Education from Queens. And we've been talking about a new year-round education program for the high schools. Is that only for Queens or for, or for all the boroughs? It'll be for all the boroughs across the city. It'll be a citywide policy. But immediately, the most impact is felt in Queens, since 11 out of the 12 high schools to be built will be in Queens. And that, that has to be approved by the, uh, by the state legislature. Right. How does it look now? Uh, I, I, I'm getting indications that it's being viewed favorably. It, to me, it's a no-brainer. Um, if we can extend the use of a school building through the year, uh, we could actually, just in this capital plan, increase the number of seats for our children by, at most, 8,000, which is incredible. The thought of creating 8,000 seats 
without having to build those additional school buildings um, is incredible. The plan that our committee is recommending um, is that all of the new schools, only the new schools to be built, be built on year-round scheduling, and that parents have the right to choose uh, to send their children there or to send them to another school. And we think that, and teachers as well, have the right to choose to work there or not work there. So we think by allowing the element of choice, it um, diminishes the argument that people have had for years about year-round education. There may be some parents who say, or some teachers who say, you know what, this won't work well, in our family. The thing that surprises me most is the teachers, because as you know, my wife is a teacher, and they all look forward to the vacations, the recent winter sure. vacation, sure. and the coming Easter vacation, and then the summer vacation sure. uh, are things that all the teachers look forward to. One so of the, one of the, seems uh, strange that they would agree. That they agree to, again, because it's about choice. It's about not mandating people to work on a schedule that's not appropriate for them or that doesn't work for them. We actually studied the Los Angeles model, and uh, I visited schools out in Los Angeles. We actually did a teleconference and between... And do they have that in Los they Angeles? Had, they've had year-round education. Um, and they've actually mandated it. They've gone a, a much stricter uh, program than we are recommending. Um, and they've had it for probably 10, 15 years, and it works. Um, and it, again, in Los Angeles, it's done for the same reason, to relieve overcrowded schools. And what the teachers out there told me is for those who work in the schools that are on year-round schedule, it gives them the ability to take vacations at times during the year uh, mm -hmm. when it's not as expensive. Mm. Uh, I met one teacher that's who said, that's, I just came true. back from Japan sure. on a shoestring right. because I was able to take my vacation in November when people don't take vacation. So, again, it's an individual decision both for a teacher who wants to work there or not work there and for a parent to choose whether to send their child there. There were a number of parents on our year-end education committee, and when they presented to the board a few months ago, um, one of the parents said, you know, if I have a choice of sending my child to an overcrowded high school where maybe they won't get a full complement of classes, um, or I can send my child to a new state-of-the-art, brand-new building uh, and have somewhat of a disruption perhaps in the family schedule because maybe my child mm -hmm. will have vacations at odd periods of time. Uh, the parents said, for me, it's a no-brainer. I'll go to the new quality state-of-the-art school with, and, and have my family adapt to the schedule. Okay, well, let's, let's hope it works. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem that I believe you have in the Board of Education is the requirement that the regions have that uh, high school graduates must pass the regents' exam. And uh, the, the reason that's uh, so important is because the recent decision of uh, George Degrassi mm -hmm. having to do with fiscal equity pointed out that at the present time, only 12% of the students who graduate uh, uh, from high school get a Regents Diploma. So how do you think it would be possible mm -hmm. to increase that to 100%? Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, um, you know, meeting the new standards will be a great challenge for many of our children. And right now, in all of our schools, we've put in place additional programs to support the children. Um, you know, part of it goes back to you know, resources once mm -hmm. again. The state has mandated the new standards and the fact that students have to pass the five regions in order to graduate, and I fully support that. We need to raise the bar. We need to expect, and we can expect more from our children than they can do it, but we have the responsibility to give them the resources to get there. And that may mean Saturday classes or evening classes or smaller classes. And to do that, you need resources. You brought up uh, the Judge DeGrass decision on the uh, campaign for fiscal mm -hmm. equity uh, right. lawsuit. And that clearly stated that the state has the responsibility to provide a free and appropriate education. Yeah, but the state is appealing that, so as a lawyer, it. I know We're that any good lawyer can postpone sure. a, a decision for years. We were very, very discouraged and disappointed um, that the state is appealing that decision. And we're hoping that this year the legislature will move forward to at least try to make up some of the difference. Um, and reward the New York City public schools the, the um, necessary funds to be able to help our children meet the standards, especially the new region's requirements. You know, um, uh, just today some numbers um, were published which showed that our dropout rate has increased by yeah, two points. Yeah, because the, the worst way to meet the standards is by having a uh, higher dropout sure. rate so that then uh, fewer of the students graduate and then you don't have to get them to pass the regions. But right. the, the judge's opinion pointed out that 30% of the students never get a high school diploma. 10% mm -hmm. only get a GED, 
which is the according to the judge meaningless, right. and 48 percent who do get a high school diploma uh, only have uh, an achievement level of the sixth to ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So that's a very serious uh, problem to 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 try to resolve within a short it period is. of time. I mean, clearly, um, you know, we've put focus on this um, in the last few years, helping our children meet the standards, especially at high school. We need greater resources to be able to do this. It's something we're going to be advocating for and having conversations. I think the chancellor today is actually up at the state legislature meeting talking on this uh, same issue. Um, we have special challenges here in New York City with so many students who don't speak English, who have, mm -hmm. have great needs. Um, a large number of special ed students. You know, we both in the area of English language learners and the area of special ed, we are reforming um, both of those programs so that the students of the future uh, will get everything they deserve. Well, the chancellor is always is also trying to uh, get the standards reduced. Do mm -hmm. you think it'll be possible to do that? Um, I I doubt it. I yeah. doubt if the uh, if Commissioner Mills and the State Board of Regents um, will um, diminish. Um, the standards. I, I really, I really doubt that. But I think what we've got to talk about is giving our kids the resources they need to okay, be able to. Okay. Now, meet the, standards. the most important resource, of course, is teachers. Mm -hmm. And there, you have the same problem that there are not enough teachers in the system. Right. How are you going to meet that need? Well, there's, you know, it, it's the number one focus for all of us. You know, certainly we have to pay our teachers better. You know, if you look at society in general, we've got to value teaching as a, a career and as a profession, and encourage young people to go into teaching. You know, there are a lot of programs in place, both with CUNY uh, scholarship programs. Um, we're, uh, I've been very involved, Borough President Shulman and I have been very involved in the creation of a school at Queens College, an elementary school that will serve as a laboratory for the School of Education at Queens College so that our teachers will be trained better. Yeah, but, but you see, that illustrates a problem. I'm getting a lot of letters mm -hmm. from the people in that neighborhood mm -hmm. who are opposed to the school because they don't want a school. Right. And so while you talk about building those schools, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you and I know is very difficult to do is to get the approval of people in every neighborhood because you send out a letter to the whole county and you mm -hmm. get back uh, letter saying, we all agree you need schools, but not in my fa backyard. Right. You're so, so right. You know, for years, I think schools were not built in Queens because um, the feeling was that in Queens it's very difficult to find sites for schools. And then when you do find a site, there mm -hmm. are always a group of people who oppose it. And But I will tell you, uh, just in the last 12 months, we have managed to find 28 sites, Great. Uh, which is fabulous, and we're moving forward with them. And the truth is, in every community, there are a small group of people who will oppose a school building mm -hmm. because it means a change in their lives. Maybe it means more traffic. Maybe it means that every morning at 8.30 and every afternoon at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, there'll be cars and noisy children. And that happens all across America yeah. at 9 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock every morning and 3 every afternoon. The reality is if we want good, strong, stable neighborhoods, we're going to have to build good schools. So it has to be a priority. We have to put the children first. We have to find sites, and we've managed to do it, good, appropriate sites, certainly on the campus of Queens College is an excellent site for a school. We're looking forward to building that. Now, of course, we have now uh, everybody in the country involved in education, mm -hmm. and we now have a president, President Bush, who says that he, he is a real education president, mm -hmm. and he has his first bill was a bill that had to do with uh, uh, special proposals for education, mm -hmm. which will affect the city of New York. How do you feel about the president's program? Well, I think we're still looking at the specifics of it, but I was encouraged this morning to read that uh, the uh, president has proposed that the budget, the education budget increase by 11 percent, and that's encouraging. The jury's out. We'll see how it impacts on New York City. We'll be watching it closely. One of his proposals has to do with uh, changing Head Start mm -hmm. so that provides specific uh, training for the uh, for the kids when they come in. Mm -hmm. You support that idea? Absolutely. The sooner we have children um, learning um, at a young age, uh, the better they do. You know, all the studies show that if you have uh, four-year-old children attending preschool where they're, you know, they're read to and, and they're, they begin to learn at that age, it's not just games and fun. Every study shows when they track those students that they perform better a higher uh, level of high school graduation, a higher level of college attendance, a um, higher rate of home ownership when they're tracked. Um, they're much more successful in life. The earlier we can get the students, the better. And I suppose you 
uh, support an increase in the pre-kindergarten programs. Absolutely, too. absolutely. Uh, probably for us in New York City and certainly in Queens, the greatest challenge is finding sites to be able to house um, our pre-K students. Uh, it's something we work very hard on in, in Queens. And most of our pre-K seats right now are um, uh, with uh, not-for-profit providers rather than our school buildings, but I'd certainly prefer they be in our school buildings. Now, another of President Bush's proposal, mm -hmm. which is more controversial, is the idea that if you have a failing school mm -hmm. and uh, the efforts to improve it uh, do not bring about a result, that after three years, the money, the federal money, which is only 7%, mm -hmm. but still substantial amount, that goes to those schools would be taken away from the school and given to the parents. How do you feel about that proposal? Well, I think that's a Band-Aid approach. You know, we know what works in our schools. Smaller classes, well-prepared teachers, engaged, involved parents, um, uh, uh, suitable, appropriate buildings. Those are the things we should be investing in. We know they work. We know that's what helps the children, uh, children perform better in school, and that's what we should be investing our money in. Okay. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. You can reach us by email at our website, www.cuny.tv, or write to us at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016.